Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue thinking about deformation and metamorphic rocks. So in this video we're going to think about where does metamorphism occur and this is going to correspond to section 8.9 of your textbook. So as we've already discussed we know that metamorphism will occur in regions where we have increasing pressure, increasing temperature, increasing tectonic stresses or increased hydrothermal fluid flow. Now, most of the time, we are going to see this pati these particular processes tending to congregate in areas where we have plate tectonic boundaries. So you'll find that most metamorphism will occur in regions which are being actively deformed because crust is moving towards each other, crust is moving away from each other, or crust is moving past each other. So we've already run through the, the basic types of metamorphism which we see. So the first type of metamorphism which we see is of course contact metamorphism and this is produced by the heating of rocks due to the presence of magma. Now we've discussed this tends to happen at relatively low levels in the Earth's crust, so rel relatively close to the surface. And so this means that this type of metamorphism is often associated with high temperatures because of the heat from the magma, but relatively low pressures because we're at relatively shallow depths in the Earth's crust. Now, because we have relatively low pressure, of course, this means there's not really much tectonic stress. And so this means that when our metamorphic minerals grow, there's nothing which is going to force them to align themselves. And so most contact metamorphic rocks will not have a foliation or a lineation. Now, contact metamorphism can obviously occur anywhere where we have uh, intrusions entering the crust, but arguably one of the most, the, the most common locations for large amounts of intrusions forming will be either convergent or divergent plate boundaries. The next type of metamorphism is regional metamorphism, and this is arguably the most important type of metamorphism because regional metamorphism will typically lead to the generation of large volumes of metamorphic rock because most regional metamorphism is associated with orogenic events, mountain building events. And as we know, if we look at the Himalayas or the Andes or the Rockies, we know that these events cover very, very large areas, and so they're going to produce a large uh, amount of metamorphic rock as a byproduct. Now in terms of the conditions which we get during regional metamorphism it can vary anywhere from relatively low grade metamorphism so low pressures and temperatures all the way up to very high grade metamorphism so high pressures and temperatures. Typically the deeper you are in, your, in the mountain range the higher the metamorphic grade will be. The final type of metamorphism which is commonly discussed is subduction metamorphism and this is normally part of the broader regional metamorphic process. But as we've discussed, when it comes to subduction metamorphism, we have a situation which is rather special. So in subduction metamorphism, we have conditions where we have very, very high pressures because we have two pieces of crust converging on each other. However, within these pieces of crust which are converging with each other, there's lots and lots of water. And so the, uh, the convergence of these pieces of crust start to produce heating, which causes the water to begin to circulate. And as all this water is circulating around, it picks up heat and it transports it away. So during subduction metamorphism, what happens is we have very high pressure conditions, but the temperature is kept artificially low due to the presence of all this circulating water. And so subduction metamorphism is often associated with high pressures and low temperatures. So each of these different types of metamorphism are going to produce different types of rock because the pressure and temperature conditions are going to be different and we're also going to have differences in the amount of stress. I should point out by the way that as both regional and subduction metamorphism are associated with convergence that means there's going to be lots and lots of compression, so lots of compressive stress. And so this is obviously going to lead to the formation of metamorphic rocks that have foliations and lineations, because that compressive stress is going to force the minerals to align themselves if they can. So let's begin by looking at a convergent plate boundary and thinking about the types of metamorphism which will be associated with this uh, convergent event. So as we can see, we have ourselves a situation where we have a piece of oceanic crust subducting underneath a piece of continental crust. Now, obviously, because we have two pieces of crust smashing into each other, we're going to have lots and lots of 
compression. So this means we are very likely to form large volumes of rock which have foliations and lineations. So where is the metamorphism going to be occurring? Well, we know that this region right here, where we have subduction taking place, is going to be associated with metamorphism. It's going to be associated with subduction style metamorphism. And so we know this area here is obviously going to be exposed to very, very high pressures because we have two large pieces of crust smashing into each other. At the same time, we have fluid circulation in this region, and this fluid circulation is going to help to keep the temperature artificially low. So we're going to have high pressure, low temperature conditions, and so this is going to produce subduction metamorphism. Now over here you can see we have a region which is being affected by compression. Now this diagram doesn't quite uh, do justice to the situation, but what you'll notice is that this area of crust here is considerably thicker than the original thickness of the crust right here. And this is relatively common during orogenic events because what's happening is the, the crust is being forced to buckle, so it's folding. And we also have lots and lots of reverse and thrust faults forming. So this will push sheets of rock over the top of each other. And this will lead to the crust in this region here becoming thicker. Now, as the crust thickens, this obviously means that the rocks which are towards the bottom of our crust are suddenly going to find themselves being buried deeper and deeper as more material gets pushed on top. And this means they're going to steadily be exposed to higher pressures and temperatures. And so this is what's going to be causing our regional metamorphism. And typically the higher grade regional metamorphic rocks will form deeper in our mountain range. So we're going to have high grade metamorphic rocks, regional metamorphic rocks forming down here at higher pressures and temperatures. And as we steadily move to shallower depths, we're going to see the metamorphic grade steadily dropping as the pressure and temperature does the same. Now, at subduction zones, we are also going to get the formation of large amounts of magma, and this magma is going to rise up into the crust. Now, in the lower regions of the crust, the magma will not cause contact metamorphism because the crust down here is very, very hot. So you're putting crust, which is very hot, in contact with magma, which is very hot, and to be honest, it's not really going to do very much. Now, as this magma moves to shallower crustal levels, on the other hand, we will get contact metamorphism taking place because we're going to have very, very hot magma in contact with rocks which are, by comparison, quite cold. And so the addition of this heat is going to drive contact metamorphism. But remember, the contact metamorphism is just going to be limited to the margins of our intrusion. So the total volume of rock actually being produced by contact metamorphism is going to be very small when you compare it to the huge volumes of metamorphic rock, which will be produced by regional metamorphism. Now, another situation in which we can find regional metamorphism occurring is at a convergent continental-continental boundary. So in this instance, we know that initially our boundary started off like this, but we have a piece of continental crust over here to the left attached to this piece of oceanic crust. So eventually, as this oceanic crust is subducted and destroyed, the piece of continental crust over here is going to steadily move to the, to the east, and eventually it's going to make contact with this piece of continental crust here. And of course, this is going to lead to the formation of a mountain range similar to the Himalayas. So in this situation, what's going to happen? Well, once again, we're going to have two pieces of continental crust smashing into each other. So this is going to lead to crustal thickening. And so the, the thickening of the crust here is going to cause the rocks which are present at the base of the crust to experience higher pressures and temperatures. And so they are going to metamorphose. And so at this continent, continent, continent boundary, we're going to have regional metamorphism associated with burial. And we're also going to have a lot of regional metamorphism associated with shearing because down here where the pressure and temperature is high, we're going to have large amounts of thrust faulting occurring. And this thrust faulting is going to shear the rock. So we're going to have minerals which are being stretched and, and, uh, and sheared due to the movement of these blocks of rock. So we're going to have lots and lots of shearing in these areas as well. And this is also going to lead to the formation of metamorphic fabrics.
Now, the one thing you'll notice is that in this situation, there is very little magma present. And so this means that we are unlikely to get large amounts of contact metamorphism associated with this continent-continent convergent boundary. So you'll notice there is that difference between um, a ocean continent convergent boundary and a continent continent convergent boundary. At a continent continent convergent boundary we have a lot of regional metamorphism but it's primarily due to burial and shearing. There will, there will also be a little bit which might be related to hydrothermal fluid movement but not a whole lot. In contrast when we think about our ocean continent convergent plate boundary we're going to have lots of subduction related metamorphism, we're going to have lots of regional metamorphism resulted from resulting from crustal thickening so that's going to be burial metamorphism but we're also going to have metamorphism related to contact metamorphism because we're going to have the movement of magma through the crust all right thank you for watching everybody and have a good day